K advisors want to build a scalable practice, but aren't always sure what to do next. Welcome to Outcomes, the podcast designed to help advisors think, make decisions, and cast a vision to create a business for the future. Here's your host, Ross Marino, financial planner, author, speaker, and CEO of Advisor 2X. Welcome to Outcomes, the podcast. Today, we are joined by Joe DeNoyer, President of Retirement and Private Wealth at Hub. Joe, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me, Ross. Great to be here. Been waiting to talk with you. We've spoken in the past, and I know that right now your focus is income. That's where you're putting a lot of effort into. That is a common topic out there. We're he hearing people talk about it. But for some people, there's a driver, there's a motivation, maybe it's a, an aha moment or an experience. You actually had a story that supported, here's why we have to talk about income. Would you mind opening with that? Yeah, sure, thanks Ross. So, um, and I'm sure all of you that are listening and, and watching have a story that kind of something clicked their aha moment. And um, about two, almost two years ago, we had a great client of ours who the, the business turned and they actually were closing down shop, if you will. It wasn't a family business. It was, you know, the, the markets changed on them and they decided to close the door. And when they did that, they have a little about 120 people. And what they did for, with us is they said, hey, can you come in and just counsel all our folks? These have been long-term employees. You know, this is just a tough time for all of us. Can you just sit down one-on-one? -on -one? And we were, of course, we'll sit down one-on-one. -on -one. They had a pension plan that was frozen for years, so it was a little bit on the smaller side, but they had pretty good savings rates in their 401k plan. And so we brought three of us in there. We met with every person, about 100, and I think it was 117 people we met with, and it was just, you're okay, let's talk it through. And overwhelmingly, and this was the shocking, this is the aha moment, the number one question that everybody asked us was, will I have enough money to actually retire? can I actually retire and afford, and they didn't say it the way our, our industry says it, you know, can I maintain my, li my style of uh, my lifestyle? They basically said, am I okay? And you know, that, you, as we're going through that, you don't think much about it other than, well, that sh should be a pretty important question. And you're kind of talking them through what the pension benefit looks like, and then their 401k balance. But here's where the aha moment came. At the end of the day, there was three of us in our t on our team meeting with these folks one-on-one. -on -one. We all go to the conference room just to kind of debrief to make sure we're, we're covering the right things for the next day. And, you know, I said to everybody, what, was the, what, were, what were the questions like? And what we determined, 75% of the questions were, do I have enough money to retire? I mean, that's what most people were asking. They were just looking at us like, please, please tell us we're okay. Um, and it's, it's something that at that particular moment, I said, you know what, we've done a really good job of creating these savings vehicles, but then we just push people off the cliff. They get to this thing called retirement and we don't actually help them place their, replace their paycheck. And that's where I said, you know what, we have a new focus. We need to start working with our industry and our industry part partners to talk about income. So income is the focus. And as I'm listening to you talk, am I okay? Do I have enough? Instinctively, I go to nest egg and I go to a dollar amount because that's often where we go to. Do I have enough? It's do I have enough money? But they're being more specific and that's what you're pointing out that it really isn't about nest egg, it's about income. And that has to shift the conversation from what's your number, how much do I need to save versus how much do I need to save to generate this kind of income? What are you doing now in the practice to try to help people understand that? Yeah, so let me go back, Ross. I'll even break it down even further. They don't even know, you know, I, I don't want to downplay the importance of this. I'm not sure they're even thinking, what do I need to do to generate enough income? This simple question is, can I replace my paycheck? That's the question, really. So what we're doing, and, we, and I think many of us, and, and I can give shout outs to many different industry partners and the record keepers have done a really good job of that, of changing that conversation from what's your number, because that's an irrelevant thing, to how much will you need in retirement? in an actual form of a monthly paycheck, or even by, we have some of our plans that have converted it to bi-weekly to match their actual payroll. So, you know, we often call a 401k plan a way for us to make small sacrifices today in order to replace our paycheck during our longest period of unemployment. That's what it is, right? So, you know, folks are, when they say, do I have enough money? I think, you know, they're, they're probably trying, real question is, can I replace my paycheck? That's really the question they're asking. So we are changing, we, we aren't changing, we've done this years ago, but we have changed the focus when we talk to participants in 401k plans and 403b plans about, let's try to determine what you'll need in retirement. 
and then convert that to a real number. And again, our record keeper partners have done a great job. You can, you can call all different scores they have, the colors, whatever the case may be. The underlying theme is they've converted it to paycheck replacement. And I think that's the key. So when we're talking to folks, we want them to start thinking about, hey, how much do I actually need based on what I'm currently making now? Just, just give us an idea. Do you have any money left over at the end of the month or is there a month left over at the end of the money? That's the real question. So why don't we just go straight into the shout out, something I usually reserve for the end of an interview, because I think it's important to talk about what you notice, because listeners, myself included, I want to know what you think is really good out there. What do you see that you like? And with income, there are record keepers that are putting resources into that. So how about you shout out a few of them and let us know what they're doing and why you think it's working? Yeah, well, I think you all, you know, we can name the big ones. I think you all realize or, or all of us in the business understand the, the progress that the principal has made with their, their score um, in power, lifetime income score. I think that's, a, you know, that really helps. For, for those two examples, I'll stop, I'll hover there for a second. When we're doing education for the participants, we're talking about that first, you know, so principal has this thing, know your score or um, in power, you go, let's, let's talk about what lifetime income score really means rather than just some number on the, on the screen. Let's talk about it. But most of the record keepers have done a great job with it. There are a few record keepers that make you dig a little bit deeper for it. Um, and I like when it's on the landing page, I think that's really important. So, you know, I would say the primary ones, you, you, again, principal, empower. I don't want to leave anybody else. Fidelity does a really good job at it. But, you know, you're also looking at some of these companies that are not the large ones. But CUNY Mutual has done a great job, in my opinion, of converting the conversation from a balance based to a paycheck replacement based. I think they do a great job at it. And again, many do. So we've got record keepers that are giving us the resources. But at the end of the day, for most plans and for most practices, it's going to be up to us, the advisors, to implement some type of communication strategy to roll it out so that we can communicate this to the participants and help them embrace it and understand it. So even though the capability may be there from the record keeper, I'm sure most record keepers, I'm going to go with all record keepers would say not every plan they have is actually using it. So Correct. adoption isn't 100%. That's just part of business. What do you think the challenges are to adoption? I, I think like anything, it's, it's a clear, concise, repeatable message. I think that's the, the real challenge is we can't just throw it at employees through a, you know, a quick one time we go in there when we first get to a new um, record keeper, or we can't just talk about it every so often. So what we try to do, and again, it's, it, it works with some groups, it doesn't work with all, what we try to do is thread that message in every communication we have with them. It's, it's a real simple concept, again, that repeatable process. So when we go in and talk to them, we may be there talking about um, something completely different in, that, in our education series. We talk about all sorts of things like budgeting and just different life hacks with finances but we always weave back into what, depending on what the record keeper partner is, we weave back in that language that gets the employees thinking about, oh, you know what? This is the fifth time I heard about this. Maybe I should pay attention to it. <laughs> so I think that's the one thing. And then the second thing I think is a real challenge um, and, and we're getting better at it as an industry, but we've made a ton of focus on it is we actually use with our committees a report card. And we all see the plan health reports and we sometimes breathe through the plan health reports and pick out a few things. But what we do is at the beginning of each year with our committees, we set up our goals for communication to the employees. And then we actually measure the results of those goals but based on a couple of factors. And one of them is improvement in savings rates, therefore an improvement in the lifetime income score or paycheck replacement, whatever we want to call it, depending on the, the plan health report. For the vendors that don't have it, you know, we're, we look at third party software to start calculating, can we get a better understanding are all these things that we're doing for the employees and all the time, effort, and money the, the plan sponsor spending on helping their employees, is it actually working? And then we determine what's working and keep going with it. So when I hear this shift towards income, um, I love focusing on replacing the paycheck because it has to be simple. We know that. We have to communicate in simple terms. They have to be able to connect the dots. Yeah. I know income is going to be the conversation of the future. We know that you have to repeat it over and over. I wonder if it's going to be like auto enrollment where we look at it as advisors and think no brainer. 
this is a fantastic way to help people save, yet the adoption actually takes time to roll out. Do you think this emphasis on income and then the record keepers and the marketplace coming up with products to fill that need, is this going to go a lot faster than auto enrollment adoption? Or do you think this is going to be a long runway? Uh, well, I would love to say we can snap our fingers and it's complete. It's going to be a long runway. Um, you know, not, when you go back to all the auto features, when we first started talking about it, and you can go back, I mean, it's really 15, 18 years now. I, I think we had our first auto enroll plan like 21 years ago, but um, you know, if you, if you actually look at the adoption of auto features, it took, you know, not only our industry, it took the financial press, it took, I mean, it was a huge effort, right? The government was talking about it. So, um, and then we slowly but surely had to convince plan sponsors this was the right way to go. And once it started, you know, the, the ball started rolling down the hill, it really took off. But if you really go back to just some of the industry publications or financial publication, we were talking about it long before it became popular. Okay, it made a lot of sense. Uh, you know, Shlomo's book came out when, and you know, he was up there talking about it for a really long time. Um, and then slowly but surely the adoption started taking off and then it was the steamroller. I think with income, we have a separate problem or, or an additional challenge. I don't wanna call it a problem. A different, a different challenge because we're now talking about a product or a series of products as well as the concept. Okay, so it makes it a little bit more difficult um, I, you know, what we really need is we need the industry to come together and now we're crossing industry lines. So we have the investment managers, you have record keepers and platforms, and you have insurance companies. Now, sometimes they're one and the same, but for this to really work, we, we kind of need to bring all those parties together to make sure that we have a product that is one, simple to explain and simple to digest. And that's the challenge of all challenges, you know, when we talk annuities inside retirement plans, that is the challenge of all challenges right there. Simple and easy to understand and digest. So when we're selling, quote unquote, selling this concept to the plan sponsors, they feel comfortable to roll it out to their employees. But the most important thing is that the employees understand it. Um, I think it will, it will go a little quicker than the adoption of auto features, but I'm going to put a big footnote there. Once we have the solutions and, and really the solutions that are portable, you, we can go down, we can spend hours on what the right solution may look like, but it's really when we have the solutions out there, I think then it's going to take a little bit less time because more, we, we actually had a setup, if you will. And the setup is we've been talking about income for the last four or five years, right? We've been talking about paycheck replacement for even a little bit longer. So now it's just the next step or the evolution of a 401k plan. And I think portability is going to be one of those issues. I interviewed Jake Rushton a little while ago, and we were talking yeah. about income solutions and what kind of products will be out there. And it would be a challenge if a product from, let's say, vendor A was only good at vendor A. And when sure. I left vendor A, right, that was it. Uh, I couldn't add any more money to it. So instead of ending up with six 401ks at the end of my life, I can combine them. I can roll them over. That's something I can do, right? Well, yep. I don't want six different income features or, or uh, income products out there, right? That's not going to work. So Well, once, six, six different right. with six different, you know, footnotes and disclosures right. that you're just trying to figure out, well, one works this way and one works that way. It's impossible. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's not going to work. So I, I think that's going to be one of the obstacles they're going to have to overcome. And a lot of people want it. It's necessary, I think, in many ways. So I, I believe they're going to figure it out. Um, now, speaking of simple, the last time we spoke, you did some drawings for us. Oh, I brought no. them up <laughs> when I talked with Sherry Fitz be, because they were brilliant. And I want to do a quick setup here before I, actually, before sure. I ask you to walk through this. And that is, and I just mentioned this to you, this morning, I read an article that said telling somebody something they don't know is often surprising and interesting to them. And we're tempted to do that as professionals. We love to share our knowledge. But telling somebody something that they may not consciously know or they haven't articulated it, but when they hear it, they know it's true, way more powerful. And when you talk about what you need money for once you retire. You have a way of explaining it and drawing a picture with three aspects to it that I think just gets to that core of this is exactly what people already know. They just didn't put it together. And that's why I think it's powerful. So could you walk us through that? Uh, you may not have the Afro wig for Bob Ross, but yeah. I was impressed anyway. So can you share that with us? 
By the way, now that you mentioned Bob Ross, sometimes when I'm stressed, I put Bob Ross on and the whole world gets nice and calm. So I, happy yeah. trees, brother. Yeah, happy happy trees. trees. Put your happy path wherever you like it. So it's funny you mentioned Bob Ross, but when you think about it, uh, I think one of the real important things that we're tr that our responsibility is, is when we're talking to folks about why they should be saving in the retirement plan, why they should be saving more in the retirement plan, what we really should be doing is painting a picture of the importance of what they're doing, okay? And what most people want to know, I mean, it's really simple, is I, I call it, this is, the, this is the three things we talk about. And I'll draw the picture, and I'm, I'm going to try to do it. Um, it's going to be hard for me to do on the screen, so I'll do it with you, and then, I'll, then I'll, I'll hold it up for everybody to see. But I'm now Bob Ross in my happy little world. And the three things that people really need to worry about, or they generally worry about, they just don't know how to ask the question, is one, roof overhead. Can everybody see that? <laughs> so it's roof overhead, and I'll hold it up soon. Second is food on the table, okay? So we have food on the table, and the third thing is hole in the ground. So I'm sorry this doesn't look so good. I'm actually going to sketch it again real quickly so we can yeah, all your, see it. Your marker's dying on us there. So yep. Bob Ross always has his equipment ready, and we're not yep. going to cut that out. Just I know you asked about editing. We're not cutting that out. Well, there oh, it is. See, there you go. It's roof overhead, food on the table, hole in the ground. And, and really, I, I, I don't even want to joke about it. When we're sitting down with folks, and you can, you can say this to a financial planner who's working with you know, somebody who's not mega wealthy. They're just talking to the everyday Joe like me, and they're sitting there. What they're really getting on, what people really want to know is, you know, they don't say, will I have enough money to last? They really say, will I have enough money to keep a roof overhead? keep food on the table for my family and put a hole in the ground when I'm finished. I mean, it's pretty basic. And I think when we're talking about income offered through this savings vehicle we call retirement plan, that's where you need to answer those questions. When we have that, those three things covered, then the other things could be left in the non-income producing asset inside the 401k plan. So we're giving people some flexibility, but um, that's the, it, in my opinion, the real root of the issue is discussing with folks, will they be able to cover those basic needs? And we, we do a great way of saying, sustain your lifestyle throughout retirement. What? What do you mean sustain my lifestyle? What are you talking about? Will I have enough money to put food on the table and keep my kids and, and family happy? It's kind of what the questions really come down to. There was an article recently that went over the, the JP Morgan plan sponsor survey that I wanted to bring up. And by the way, a great survey if you haven't looked at it because it's eye-opening. I can tell you that much. It's, it's as basic as roof overhead, food on the table, and hole in the ground, in my opinion. You just rattled off a couple of the questions that they said. These are the yeah. most common questions that yeah. the participants bring up, and uh, Catherine Roy went over it. And first they said half of the plan sponsors thought DC plans were both a savings and income-generating vehicle. That's half of the plan sponsors. I'm pretty sure half of the 401k plans, if you ask the advisor, aren't designed or intentionally set up and communicated as an income generation and generating plan. So do you think there's a disconnect there? Uh, yeah, of course, I think there's a disconnect. I, I, again, but think about it from the plan sponsor's point of view, right? We call it retirement plan, retirement plan, retirement plan. Well, what is retirement? Retirement is needing some income to replace your paycheck. So when, when we're talk about it in that format often. Um, and then we start showing them the, the different likelihood of success for their employees. Now I'm just taking this from the plan sponsor's eyes for a second. And we're trying to convert everything into monthly income. So they see that, you know, over time, we're repeating the same message to them as well. This is, if I'm, you know, just sitting there as a plan sponsor, I'm thinking, yeah, this is an income producing tool because that's what we're talking about over and over again. Um, it's, it's tough for us to say, hey, it's a savings vehicle and we need to help convert it to an income tool at some point. That doesn't sound as sexy as a retirement plan, right? So I get why the answer is there. Um, we ask our plan sponsors similar questions and I, would, I, I don't have the stats, so I don't want to make them up, but I would be willing to bet it's about the same as the JP Morgan study. So let's talk about how you function on a daily or weekly basis. You're a successful advisor. I know you have a lot on your plate. I know some of your personal story as well. You certainly have to make sure you're recharged and you maintain focus to juggle everything that you juggle. How about you go over one of your routines or maybe a strategy that just helps you stay focused and make sure that you're prioritizing what needs to be done? Yeah, so it, that's always tough. I'll tell you a little quirky one. Um, I have a theme song for every day. 
right? So, um, and it's generally a pretty happy theme song because I'm, I'm into music. I don't play music. I wish I could, but I listen to music. Um, I don't do conference calls on the way home anymore. I put in music just to, de you know, just to decompress. Um, so I'll put a theme song to every day. And when I'm either starting my day in the shower or driving in or working out, whatever I'm doing, I am, I am repeating a song that's going to keep me I'm focused all day long and keep the energy level up. So obviously a weekend song may be a lot different than a Monday song. A Monday song may be a little bit more rowdy to get my butt in gear. I'm um, when a weekend song may be a little bit more calm, but you know, we joke about that. And, and, and people who know that of me, it's just like, that's ridiculous. But I said, well, it's been working for 52 years. So I'm going to run with it. Um, but what, what really do is, is, you know, how do I keep focused on, you know, everything we have to get accomplished throughout the day. And I'm not different than anybody else. We all have so much on our plate. I think the current environment has actually put a lot more on our plate. So the challenge is how am I going to start prioritizing and getting everything accomplished I need to accomplish each day while still living life. Um, so what, what I do every day is I just live intentionally. That's, that's my motto. I, today I'm going to be very intentional about doing X. And if that's spending time with my family and doing something, that's what I'm, that's where I am. And I'm going to be present there. If it's, getting some things off my list. I'm going to be very intentional on my actions to get those things off my list. And it's not easy. I can tell you, I, I go old school and still write out lists and I have them in different colors to accomplish. But at any point where I feel like I'm a little too scattered, I take a pause. I just sit back, I take a pause and I take a big breath and say, okay, let's just get back into the game here. Or if I'm not in the mood for the game, then go move on. No, no sense of staying on the field. Um, and I go elsewhere. So I've been doing that for about, 16, 17 years, uh, it was a technique when I was trying to learn how to meditate. So, and I <laughs> can never quite get the meditation down, but I get the early breathing down. And that, that, those breaths help me clear to stay focused. So I say I live every day intentionally. I love that. But you left out one key fact. You did not tell us your song of the day today. Well, it, today was Blue Sky by the Allman Brothers. That's how I started my day. So, um, it. It, yeah. And for some reason, Allman Brothers seem to come in that mix a lot. Uh, and then when I'm, whenever I'm going to the rink with my son, he puts on Hits 1 Radio. So I'm also pretty down with the top 40 right now. Um, and there's one song that starts off saying, Feeling Good. So whenever I'm having a crappy day, I'll, I'll, I'll say, i got to change my song to Feeling Good. Yeah, there's not much more powerful than music out there. Um, no. I, I've certainly made that switch on the ride home to music. I used to put in podcasts and mental yeah. feeding. And by the time you hit your driveway, you're not wound down. It doesn't no. work, right? You, you've got to have, and, and I'm actually, I think, eight minutes away from my house where my office is. So I now don't half have the audience is, Half the audience is so upset right now that you're only eight minutes away. <laughs> right, yeah, I pro probably shouldn't mention that. Uh, that well, actually, during COVID, um, I'm still going to the office, so half the people listening didn't even go anywhere this morning. So yeah. maybe, maybe they're actually upset at that as well, that I can come into the office and you know, we true. have enough space here. But it, it, it creates a challenge. You definitely have to wind down when you get there. Uh, final question would be, here we are still in the middle of the pandemic as we're recording this. And anytime life is massively disrupted, we have to reframe how we view things, how we see things. We have some extra time to do things maybe we didn't do in the past, but also you're going to have more pressure and, and more time constraints. Life definitely does change a lot, but you really have to reassess where you're at, sometimes make some decisions and make some changes out there. Can you point to anything that you're doing differently during the pandemic that you didn't say a year ago? Uh, yeah, great question. I think there's a few things. You know, I know there's a few things I'm doing differently. Um, first of all, taking care of my health. Um, this was kind of eye-opening that, that you know, we were just running around all day long um, and put some things secondary. So that has definitely changed the, the focus a little bit because when, when the first couple of months, when we all went to working from home, you know, I realized one, I was sitting down all day for 12 hours. Like, you know, I may have a Fitbit and my goal is 14,000 steps a day. And I was you know, generally hitting that. And then we get to work from home and I was struggling hitting that. I was getting, not even getting half because I was tied to it. So um, focus on what, one thing I heard not too long ago um, is just focus on yourself being really, you know, being present and being healthy helps many other folks. Um, I think Lisa said that. It was, I think it was one of the Excel sessions, actually. Um, but when I, when I heard that, I was thinking to myself, huh, well, I feel enlightened now. I have to be, you know, my best to, in order to help as many people as possible, particularly my family and my family at work, right? So I think that, that's been the big change that I've been much more conscious and aware of. Um, but when it comes to my work life, 
um, something I've, we've changed here, and I say we as my team, is I think we're all much more aware of how important our interactions are with fellow teammates. Um, you know, you can get in, during COVID, you know, this is kind of eye-opening, you can get real lazy and just keep shooting off emails to folks, and that slowly but surely you might lose some personal connection. So what we, we have been very aware of in our office is how important that personal connection is to our teammates here. Um, think about it. Before this, you'd go to work and spend 10 hours a day or eight hours, whatever it is a day, around your work family, and you don't realize how much you go back and forth. And what you don't realize is how much you depend on them for your mental health, right? Um, so, you know, I've made a, a really strong effort to make sure that we constantly check in with each other. This makes it real easy. We do a quick Teams or, you know, Zoom, whatever, where we're checking in. But it's, I'm, I'm calling folks and asking how they're doing, not, hey, did you finish XYZ project yet? And I think if we all can, can step back and appreciate the folks in our lives right now, because think about it, during COVID, a lot of folks are not in our life anymore or, or temporarily put on hold because we're not just out and about as much. So it allows us to really focus on those, those people that are part of our daily lives. Um, you know, my recommendation would be just as based on my experience is those small little check-ins that mean the world of difference, not only to the folks you're checking in with, but to me, I mean, to you, it'll make a difference. I had heard it said before that if I want to be helpful, I have to be healthy. Yes. And that That's really resonated with, it was, it was wonderful. It's from a, a guy who's a, named Andy Stanley, who's a great communicator. He's wonderful with yeah. little quips. That one stuck with me. And I thought, yeah. no, you're right. Because if I'm out of energy and I'm not real healthy, my ability to help as a husband, father, friend, coworker, doesn't matter what it is, it's going to be limited. So I, I think it's wonderful to bring up that. And then, of course, our interactions. We take a lot of things for granted. We know that. We have to be much more intentional uh, to engage with people around us. And yes, Zoom is cool. It's not just that it's way better than phone calls, but I think it's what you talked about is that when you're away from everybody, it's even worse. And you have to value yeah. that and you want to get more connected with people. So it's not just that I love it better than phone calls. I think it's also the lack of interaction with people face to face that makes this even more important for us during the day. So, well, hey, Ross, it, go, it goes to your point you just made, right? Or the point we're discussing. You know, being healthy. Being present is really important for the people around you, but part of main part of health is mental health. All right. So um, I feel like if if we have our acts together, okay, we as advisors or leaders of teams have our act together. It's our job to help other people out, and in the office, helping them out mentally is just quick check-ins, right? I mean, there. You think about. I'll just paint a quick picture. You think about somebody who is widowed during COVID, right? So they, they've lost somebody they've loved, they've lived with for how many years, and it could be a client, an employee, anybody you know, and suddenly they're on lockdown. I mean, they're alone. It's quite apparent they're alone when they're sitting there and they can't go anywhere, don't see anybody. So, you know, we put them on the top of the list in our office for clients that were in that situation. Um, you know, you, the more you know about them personally. So we were just checking with them, but you have people right on your team that, that may not have been able to handle this as well as others. You just got to identify them and help them out by checking in. And it's, and again, I think it's self-serving a little bit because it gives you mental health. So if both of you are winning, why not? Um, you know, that's what we're in a business where human interaction is so important. And, you know, during this time, I feel like the first couple of months, we were all in shock. And then when you just step back and look at it from the outside, it's like, what I miss the most is seeing people, right? It's seeing people face to face and, and kind of getting that connection. And this video, you know, video conferencing and chat definitely bridges that gap much more than a phone call, but it could be a simple handwritten note. You don't know anything to connect with somebody. I want to leave it with that. Thank you so much, Joe, for being on the show today. Anything else you want to add as a final thought? No, everybody adopt a song for the day and keep on rolling. And thanks for all, all you do for to help America save for retirement. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Outcomes. Subscribe now to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Advisor 2X. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service providers with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning.